What's up, guys? Here with you, FC Wonder Kid, episode 149. Here with my guy, Bretson. How are you? You know, I thought I would be, like, depressed or something because it's an international week, but have we not been entertained? Have we not been entertained? We've got England, Brazil at Wembley. We've got uh, two of the fastest goals scored ever in international play. We've got debuts galore, and we've got all sorts of Copa America talk and Euro talk and fun stuff. I don't know. I mean, this international break feels different. I've enjoyed myself. How about you, Alex? I You've been en enjoying yourself? I've enjoyed a lot because we've got confirmations in this international break. A Brazil that is a more united Brazil with the new manager of Dorival. We've got a German team that looks inspired with Tony Kroos returning. So a lot That's of true. big topics will be in this podcast today but don't forget to comment down below your opinions if you agree or disagree with everything we said and like like this podcast people let's surpass 100 likes in episode 149 hendrik Doable. should be the start mm -hmm. here at fc wonder kid hendrik 17 fourth youngest player to score a goal for brazil his first goal mm -hmm. ridiculous to do and brazil has to bet in this front three from now on no doubt Rodrigo, yep. Vinicius, Hendrik. This is the core. And if, if they're going to do something in Copa America, it's with these three players starting. The world will be watching. And they did yeah. in Wembley. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Hendrik, Prince of Wembley, right? Youngest <laughs> to score in a men's international game at Wembley. Um, and listen, like... This is England's first loss in 21 games at Wembley. It's their first loss since the quarterfinal. Mm. But uh, it's since the quarterfinal of the World Cup, right? Just to make sure that we all understand <laughs> where we are. That's you know over, over, I don't even know how long ago that was, but it feels like ancient times. But we also need to remember that this is a friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is no uh, no kind of moving around it Endrick is one of the most exciting striker prospects that brazil has had since when since ronaldo mm -hmm. very likely right since ronaldo oh. and it just so happens that he is the youngest right the youngest i believe to score for brazil right since ronaldo yes right and that that is really really intriguing really really interesting it's also i don't know i mean it, it could be a weight on your shoulders it could be a lot of responsibility if you are endrick mm -hmm. uh or it could also be like hey look where i am look what i get to do and take it a day at a time and something tells me endrick is more like that guy than he is the guy that lets that weight bear him down mm -hmm. um so yeah i think endrick even though it was dory Vall's, what first game in charge first i think it i think endrick has already essentially solidified himself as a everyday roster player uh maybe not in the 11 but everyday roster player for the brazilian national team and i cannot wait to see him right here this summer in the states during copa america that Com will be amazing completely agree with you hendrik from now on with this goal in wembley he already was a household name here in portugal i think he's going to be a household name worldwide from now on uh, the english people for sure know his name now because what he did at 17 in wembley is star boy material starring the making completely and another player too hendrik shined but beraldo did too and luis campus sure, signed beraldo from sao paulo for 20 million that's the elite scouting yeah. of an elite sporting director that psg have lucas beraldo Hendrik, Vandal playing at left back at a good at a good level. Danilo defensively very solid at right back. This team looks different now with Dorival. A more stable team and a team that a Brazilian team that you don't see players in the wrong positions anymore. They play where yes. they play best. Vandal plays best at left back. Danilo plays best at right back. The Drone Gomes played really well against England. Unreal mm -hmm. game from Drone Gomes. And this is what I have to say. It's an organized Brazil, and it's a Brazil that can make proper damage in Copa America. We will be talking in this yeah. podcast at the end of our Copa America draw reaction thoughts. So people stay until yeah. then. But yeah, Brazil's different. Well, then. But, and Lucas Baraldo, but also I, I, I'm just looking at we, we always talk about France's depth, right, in terms of center backs, in terms of other positions. I, I'm liking the looks right now of a Lucas Baraldo and a Mario 
right? Nottingham Forest Murillo, center back pairing for the next 10 years for Brazil. Now, obviously, there are other players. That's not always going to happen, but mm -hmm. I love that for Brazil long term. And that actually kind of might keep uh, teams like Argentina, Colombia, others up mm -hmm. at night. Um, and hopefully, we get to see some more of Baraldo. And I'm pretty certain we will yeah. at you Copa America. But I, I, I think for many people, this Brazil win at Wembley uh, brought on a very simple question, Alex. Mm. And that question is, is England overhyped? What do you think? I think England should be better coached, no doubt, with the players they have. Foden playing at right okay. wing, the, play, the way he did just showed the limitations mm -hmm. that Southgate has in his own game. I, I believe... That this England team, if they're going to win the Euros, it's because they have the best players in the world in each position. Bellingham, the best 10 in the world. Harry Kane, one of the best strikers in the world. Saka, one of the best right wingers. Declan Rice leading Arsenal, by example. One of the best in the world. So it's the quality that they have. It's just too good to even lose. So I really believe Southgate has to have better choices in a game because yeah. he's seeing that this... Brazil team, th th I, let me rephrase. This Brazil team sure. has only had four training sessions together. They looked more of a team than England in this game. They were heavy reliant on Bellingham at 10 in a new role that I believe if England are going to win the Euros, it's with Bellingham at 10. So that's a positive note, but not the way they were setting up in terms of creativity. Showell very well, limited. Yeah. Foden very... not. Foden was not limited, but Foden was not comfortable where he was, and that is a problem. No. You, England cool. needs to play to the strengths of their best players. Bellingham, Saka, Foden, Kane. And in the Euros, I am scared that yeah. that will not be the case with Southgate. And I see loads of well, England fans saying Southgate is a competition specialist. A specialist uh -huh. has won something. Has won something. Uh -huh. Okay? So well, he needs to win if, in, in order to stay, in my view. Uh and, and, and it's true. I mean, that inflexibility that, that Southgate has is, is very apparent um, and has been. Um, but if England wins Euros, uh, it's probably in spite of Gareth Southgate, not because of him, mm -hmm. right? I mean, Phil Foden, he put him in exactly the same role as Bukayo Saka, basically <laughs> expecting him to do what? To do Saka. Right. <laughs> when really he should be doing Phil Foden. And yeah, I know a lot of people out there would rather uh, this is where like the club loyalties come in, I guess. Mm. But it would rather be like, well, look at Phil Foden. He disappeared. He disappeared. <laughs> well, you know, the last time I remember Phil Foden doing some pretty awesome stuff, if I'm not mistaken, it was during the World Cup. And it was, uh, what was it, two assists versus Senegal, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, in the round of 16, yeah. Um, so when played to his strength, we know what he can do, and that's the biggest issue. Southgate has a lot of very good players, but mm -hmm. actually building a flexible tactic around them is impossible. And it's the double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. mostly, uh, mostly good, right? But the double-edged sword of having a guy like Harry Kane at the top of it all. Harry Kane does so much, and when he's out, Gareth Southgate either undercompensates or he overcompensates in order to deal with Harry Kane's absence, mm -hmm. right? Ali Watkins is not going to play the Harry Kane role, ever. True. Not in any reality. Not in any reality. So you actually have to be able to pivot, um, and I, I don't see Southgate necessarily being able to do that, but guess what? It's also kind of like, I don't know, too late to make any changes here. So yep. Southgate's not going anywhere. He's got to learn from a game like this. And a game like this, believe it or not, it being a friendly, yes, it being on home turf, yes, being it being the first time you lost in 21 games at Wembley, Ooh. but a loss like this will hopefully tell you more than you would have if you won the game, True. right? England needed to get punched in the mouth heading into what is going to be a very rough and tumble Euro uh, 2024, especially with a lot of teams growing around the favorites. It's not just France, Portugal, and England, in my opinion. Those are the three favorites. But there are other growing teams Germany. that we're going to talk about very shortly. Exactly. But Kabi Mainu made his debut, right? Mm -hmm. That was like the biggest, best thing that came on the day. <laughs> but at the same time, we need to remember England is only as good as their best players, in my opinion. Their depth is great, but mm. there is a drop-off between that. If you lose Kyle Walker, 
there is a drop off because Alexander Arnold is still injured. If you lose, uh, who else got injured? Um, let's see, uh, Bukayo Saka, uh, although that wasn't necessarily an injury. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane is injured right now. I mean, there are a lot of Harry Maguire didn't look very good. Ben Chilwell has been injured and very clearly has some coming back to do and some getting up to speed type of situation uh, going on there. So England mm. is uh, still a favorite. They're obviously under a microscope more than yep. the majority of teams that will be entering this tournament. Um, but I think if England Brazil told us anything, it told us that Gareth Southgate is not the man to get the best out of England moving forward. And that is so insane to say, Alex. Why? Because he's gotten them to a Euro final. He's gotten them to a World Cup uh, quarterfinal, I guess, right? Um, but he, he got them to a, a, a Euro final previous to this, right? I mean, that's got to be worth something. Mm. Or should it have been dead and done back when they lost that final to Italy? In my like, opinion, That should have yes. been Southgate's last game. Yeah. In so uh, it's just fueling the whole, we're not going to be able to do it with Southgate. I mean, Southgate's basically dead in the water. He has to win this or else it's over, right? Duh. The Euros, um, yep. Now the pressure yeah. is on completely, and it's because of the amount of talent that England has in their roster. Bellingham is there, Foden is there, Kane is there. Trent Alexander-Arnold is an elite alternative to Kyle Walker. And even if Trent yep. is not available, hopefully Rhys James should be available too. So you have so many Ooh. options even for right back. And yes, you, you get the feeling that Southgate is not going to take the best out of their players. But this weekend, yeah. yes, the favorites for the Euros <laughs> are still England, France, Portugal. But the new team in the block, it's not Spain. It's not Spain that lost to Colombia. It is Germany. That was an elite mm -hmm. statement to beat France the way they did. You started the podcast with saying uh, on the same day, there were two goals that broke international football in terms of the fastest ever. That is mad that that Crazy. happened. One was six seconds. It was uh, Bob Gartner of Austria. Yep. And the other was seven yep. seconds. The future of Germany, Florian Wirtz, with a masterclass eloquent pass of Tony Cruz. And this is, um, I often say that uh, Tony mm -hmm. Cruz is disrespected. And I'm going to say this really confidently. Tony Cross should be in the same mm -hmm. sentence in terms of quality and history as Iniesta, as Xavi, as Modric, as Pirlo, as the be in the best midfield ever conversation. He's won five Champions League. He's been detrimental yeah. for the future of Real Madrid and the present right now. Oh. And Dijkman Schaft, if they win their Euros, it's with Tony Cross mm -hmm. highly involved, which I do believe he will. The difference he's made, yep. he's just arrived. First game, yeah. an assist in seven seconds. Only Tony Cross could do this. The best progressive passer, maybe? No, the best I've seen in my lifetime. Tony Cross. Efficiency, man. Yeah, uh, well. Efficiency. Uh, there, there. I guess he needed that time away, um, a little recommitment, a little refresh, a little whatever. But uh, obviously he had started playing this well for Real Madrid this season. Um, and it's not a, not a shock um, hmm. that he would come back. And uh, when you get a chance to play with a Florian Wirtz, with a Jamal Muziala, um, and you get to essential. I mean, th th it's just an exciting right possibility. And Kimish, yeah. And Kimish, I, you know, he looked pretty dang good against Fantastic. Mbappe. Fantastic. Fantastic. Pretty, pretty dang good Josh, against Mbappe. Josh so, yeah. Quick, Joshua Kimish is no joke yeah. like the region of Philip Lam. Both are amazing yeah. individual players, but they're so similar <laughs> in the way they play and their strengths. Yeah. They're good in CDM and they're good at right back. Unreal well, to see Kimish yeah. in that role. And this summer, whoever gets Kimish, they get a world class player. Mm -hmm. They're lucky to get him. Bayern, I don't know how. Well, they, uh, Bayern. Aya Bayern. This, this ascension yeah. of Germany is the downfall of Bayern Munich because they sacked Julian Nagelsmann. The wrong timing. You thought you were going to do better with Tuchel. You didn't. Nagelsmann was no. with eight in eight wins in the Champions League. He leaves Bayern Munich with a 70% record, and he leaves with the trust of the German players in that locker room. Kimmich loves, loves Nagelsmann. Thomas Müller likes Julian Nagelsmann, and Germany Loves Julian Nagelsmann because he's a wonder kid coach ready to make history in this Euros. Trusting Gundogan, 
trusting Kroos, trusting Wirtz and, and Musiala, each on one of the wings. And Kimmich mm -hmm. stopped Mbappé. That is a role that Nagelsmann envisioned. And there's an interesting stat. Every time mm -hmm. Julian Nagelsmann played against Kylian Mbappé, he managed to nullify Kylian Mbappé in the last six matches. Mm -hmm. Zero goals, zero assists. So he knows yep. if you play against Mbappé, you got to stop him because it's all around him, which is naturally. Uh, so, and the, yeah, well, you know, they're going to be remembering that. But we do need to remember that this tournament is in Germany. So they're also going to have that added pressure, but the, the boost of a home nation essentially um, expecting them. I mean, this right now uh, definitely boosts them to outside favorite contention for sure. I mean, we all knew putting Musiala, putting Wirtz, putting Cruz together. Uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good, but you need, mm. to have a, you need to have a supporting cast. And I, I, I'm about ready to say that Kai Havertz, mm. Kai Havertz has been playing his best football over the last six weeks. He has been incredibly consistent, not just for Arsenal, but yes, now for Germany as well. Had a goal on mm -hmm. the day. I, I I mean, his his goal versus France was just the cherry on top for one of the more consistent periods of time that he has played for Arsenal. So um, <clears throat> a lot of it's the trust that people put in him, but it, it's coming off of a best the best six weeks that he has had since joining Arsenal. And I think it's going to continue. Uh, barring major injury, I think he is going to play a major role for Germany uh, this summer if they actually do have a shot to win the thing. And of course they do. Of course they have a shot mm -hmm. to win the thing. You've got Musiala, Wirtz, Cruz. I mean, you've got it all. If they can actually develop a striker or have somebody um, that will make sure that they put things away uh, or they get some of their uh, walking know. wounded back. Striker. You know, I, th they got Denis Zunov yeah. on the bench. Havertz playing that role quite yeah. well. I don't know if that's 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 what's needed. I think the the well, missing piece that I was shocked was Handrich. Handrich played a mm. phenomenal game in midfield, and he was the yeah. the recovery ball midfielder. He he was doing that exact yeah. role that was needed if Kimmich is at right back. So, as I said, I really believe like Toni Kroos. Coming into this mm -hmm. locker room at Dachmann Schaft, he leads by example. He has professionalism, he has talent, and he's an experience. He's got 146 UCL games. You want to learn yeah. if you're Wirtz and Musiala, be a sponge around a Toni Kroos. So yeah. this is the difference. You got it. You got the player yeah. that has won in the past. So I believe this yeah. Germany team is going to be very different from this season. And Florian Wirtz is a top five midfielder in the world in terms of form right now. He, and, and and he's yeah. so young. He's leading this Leverkusen yeah. team unbeaten. He's leading now the Dachmann Schaft as the cross. And all the stats are 37 games, 12 goals, 17 assists. Unreal yep. that he's having these numbers in March at the age and only, of under uh, 21. What's kind of crazy is that, uh, yeah, he's 21. All right. So he was two years older, if I'm not mistaken, than Tony Kreuz, Kreuz when he had his breakout season. And I think his breakout mm -hmm. season was for Bayer Leverkusen as mm -hmm. well. Uh, and we also got to remember what Kai Havertz was doing for Leverkusen at 19 years old, too. So, True. hey, it, it goes beyond Xabi Alonso, right? <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, it's clearly a club structure thing um, that has uh, – it, it's going to be the backbone of – the backbone of Germany for, for years to come. But yeah, I, I got to put them, you know, fourth or fifth on the list uh, behind those favorites for sure. Uh, so first fourth? or second behind them. Fourth or no, fifth? Fourth or fifth. Yeah. Um, outside. I mean, that's counting the three. That's so, counting the three that we uh, already oh, talked sure. about. England, France, Portugal, Germany, Netherlands for me. Uh, I don't know if Italy's up there. I put Spain maybe with that. But Italy has uh, Spalletti. Spalletti is a madman, and he goes crazy yeah. in terms of preparation. If everyone's healthy for Spain, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. They're in that top five, top six, for sure. Um, but those three are definitely chasing it. Spain, Netherlands, and Germany uh, behind the, the three favorites. But, mm. man, um, France-Germany, that was a fun one. Um, that, but then again, it's an international friendly. It's meant uh. to give you... Uh, Give True. give you a few answers. Give you a little, uh, you know, test the personnel. Um, check mm -hmm. who's gonna actually be part of the squad uh, from here on out. Uh, because within a quarter's time, within three months' time, uh, less a little less than that, we are kicking off in Germany. 
Um, <laughs> so, wow. But Chris, Christoph Baumgartner, come on, man. I've been telling you, I, I know, you know, one goal does not make a man. But Christoph Baumgartner, unfortunately, has not gotten a fair shake at Leipzig for me. I have liked him um, mm -hmm. since he made that move there. I think he can do uh, very, very well for mm -hmm. Austria in the Euros. But he just cemented himself by beating Florian Wirtz. Uh, by one second on his goal, he just cemented himself in all-time history as, and I don't know if this has fully been confirmed, but as the fastest international men's confirmed. goal ever. Confirmed. Ever. ever. That's Unreal. Crazy. Ralph That's Ragnick crazy. ball. Ralph Ragnick <laughs> ball. That's what I got to say. He's the right man to lead, to lead Austria because he's been involved so many years with the Red Bull group and Red Bull Group is the main team in Austria with Red Bull Salzburg. So, Austria, don't sleep on them. Just And I love, uh, who's the center back? Baidu, Samson Baidu. Very oh, good yeah. player. And we're going to mention Wonder Kids to watch in the Euros. I, th I didn't have that one down. But he's worth the mention for sure. But uh, I, we're mentioning uh, England. We mm. mentioned France. We mentioned Germany. We're talking about Portugal too, aren't we, Brenton? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I just, I, I really, I have one question for you. Mm. I know you're going to be able to walk me through that that battering of Sweden, uh, of Sweden. But I, I have one question for you. Tell me. Don't you want to lose before the Euros come around? Don't you need like <laughs> a, a like a pop in the face? Like you don't want to enter this tournament. There's no way you actually want to enter this tournament with Roberto Martinez on. 15 wins in 15 games. I know he's already on 11. I think there's, what, three or four more friendlies. Yes. He's at 11 wins, 11 games, 40 goals scored, four goals conceded, nine clean sheets. I mean, don't you want Portugal to lose at some point before they step foot in Germany? That loss to Morocco was enough, mate. I think that just put okay. Ronaldo, that group, built different in terms of mentality. Fair because enough. it's not even Fair just enough. Ronaldo, too. I have to respect okay. Bernard Silva, Ruben Dias, Bruno Fernandes. This is their prime. This is the Portugal prime. This is the this is the time that we believe we have a team to win the Euros. I know France are favourites. England have an awesome squad. Germany are playing at home soil, but Portugal knows that we have a team to win it. We won it in 2016 with a worse team. Now we can make it happen once again. Again, I really believe it's the case, Bretton. And one thing that I loved about mm -hmm. Robert, uh, one thing, I, Roberto Martinez, I loved to see that in his call up, the last call up of Portugal, more than 50% of the players were 25 or younger. He's trusting the youth. 32 players called up. So that's really good to see more than 16 players that are youngsters and they're willing to learn from these top players Bruno, Ruben, Cristiano, Pepe. Leaders, leaders that are vets and know how things work in international football. And we're, look, FC Wonderkid, who's been following FC Wonderkid for three, four years now, knows yeah. that we called up Noon Minch really early. Noon Minch right now is one of the best left backs in the world when he's injury free. We clearly saw it against Sweden. The progressive passes, the duels he would win. PSG are so lucky to have him in this new PSG team. World class left back people. He's going to make it. Nun Minch, Rafael Leão, our left side is one of the best in football right now. In terms of national teams, for sure, top three in the next five, ten years, Breton. I'm going to say yes. that of Rafael Leão and Nun Minch. Ridiculous. Yeah. And it was the first yes. game I saw with Sweden that Rafael Leão played really good for Portugal. And I often tell yeah. you, I respect Rafa. I love what he's doing at AC Milan. But in the past, he wasn't too good with Portugal. With Sweden, he was too good. He was there. So, so you're you're saying uh, they have the potential to be better than Teo Mbappe, left side for France? Ay ay ay, nun mensen Rafa. Maybe I'll pick them in the Euro 2024. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. But I maybe. do, I do see Mbappe as the best player in the world right now. But that just shows. Uh, he, nun mensen knows mm -hmm. him. 
Noon Minj knows what he's gonna go against Kylian Mbappe. Noon Minj has been practicing with Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, uh, Mbappe for so many years now. So he's yeah. ready, mate. And he's 21. Oh. Noon Minj is 21. We said to our listeners way back when he was 18 that he was gonna be one of the best left backs in the world. It's gonna be a second mm. Euros now, and he's still a youngster. This is ridiculous level in my view. Sporting, Very true. 48 million. That that's the transfer plus the loan fee together. It's going to be seen as a bargain in the future. You'll see. You'll see. Well, I'm very the, hyped. I'm very hyped. Uh, I, I, I can tell. I can definitely <laughs> tell. But I, I do have to ask just one more question. Um, you know, I'm looking at these upcoming friendlies and I, I get quality Croatia. of whatever. Right. Yeah. Croatia is the one to look at. I think that's the only one that really gives kind mm -hmm. of relevance um, here. But yeah, I mean, why aren't you setting up? Why aren't you? Uh, not you in particular, but why isn't <laughs> Portugal hosting Brazil uh, at the Estadio Jogal uh, or at, you know, wherever, right? Um, game, yeah. Why are why are you not playing um, some of the highest ranked teams out there in prep for this? Because ultimately, I mean, I don't think it's Portugal getting knocked out by Slovakia. Right. Or is it Slovenia, Slovakia or Slovenia, mm -hmm. whichever one's in it. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't see them getting knocked out by that. I see them getting knocked out by a France. True. Right. But I don't want to play France. Yeah. I don't want to play France and friendlies, Bretson, because there's too okay. many routines and there's too many things and gimmicks that if France knows early, mm -hmm. it's not going to be good in a one on one game. Fair and enough, and enough, it's it, we align ourselves a lot with routines, preparation, and that's what's been surprising for me with Roberto Martinez. Roberto Martinez mm -hmm. has established himself as a true manager for Portugal. And I was really surprised to see that happening with a foreigner because only Scolari managed to do that in the past. Scolari sure. united Portugal. Scolari made Portugal feel like we could conquer the world again. And Roberto Martinez mm -hmm. is doing just that. We have the feeling that we have a strong group. A team that like wins 11 wins in a row, only concedes two goals, and like the, the four center backs for Portugal, I can tell to all the listeners here at FC Wonder Kid, with no injuries, for sure, going to Portugal center backs will be Pep, will be Ruben Dias, will be Antonio Silva, and will be Gonçalo Inácio. And I'm really happy mm -hmm. that two of these players are under 23. And it's the present yeah. and future of our team. It's ridiculous. And that's what I like mm -hmm. about it. It's the mix. We have experience yep. with youth. Our left side, Rafa Leão and Nuno Mendes, young. But then you have Bruno, Palinha, Ruben Dias, Bernard Silva that are experienced leading the way there too. And then you have a João, oh. Me João Neves in the middle of all this. You have a João yeah. Neves in the middle of all this being a sponge learning from the best in Portugal. João Neves yeah. will be one of the best midfielders in the world right now, man. I'm not. No, well, will uh, be no. He is in that talk already. João Neves is already one of the best midfielders in Europa League. He's the best midfielder in the Portuguese league, and he's 19. To see this level, it's shocking. Shocking. I have a friend that I it, went to it, see the Befica game. A Rangers fan. He said this sure. kid's the best player on the on the pitch. He's the best player on the pitch. Yeah. Unreal. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, yeah. But unreal. I, 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 hey, listen. I, I can, I can feel the, the uh, optimism from here. I only, uh, I only worry mm. um, if I have to take the other side of things, right? Which I don't want to do. That I don't like. I don't like pouring cold water on Alex's optimism here. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is. We have to remember the Roberto Martinez that that took Belgium only so far, only true so far. Um, with all that talent. Now, I think you're correct in your assumption, whether it's optimism or not. I, I think it's undeniable how deep and how good Portugal's squad is. And I believe as a whole, they are better than probably Belgium. I think so. 11, no, I, I wouldn't but say 25 was, players, but yes. No, no, I, I really yeah, believe yeah, yeah, yeah. Roberto right. Martinez, players. strongest 25 yeah. teams he's had, it's with Portugal this year. This is the strongest yeah. Portugal team maybe I've seen in my life, Bretton. Maybe. Yeah. Well, it's definitely it's definitely better than Everton. You know, we just got to say it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, Wigan. But no, uh, yeah, I, and Wigan. Oh, my gosh, those Wigan days. I just, uh, I'm just looking at it, and, I, I, and I, I want, I almost like want 
there to be negativity heading into this because it's it's the uh, I don't know the proper saying, um, but it is the optimism that eventually kills you uh, in the end. Once you know you don't want to get punched in the face by well, I mean you guys would still survive getting punched in the face by a Czech Republic, mm -hmm. by a Turkey, by a who who is it that might go in there? It's Greece or Georgia, mm -hmm. correct? Um, but it just it just um, <clears throat> it, it'll come down to who that round of sixteen is. Right, True. who that round of sixteen opponent is, and um, that that's that's going to be absolutely huge, no, no, huge uh, for you guys. But I, yeah, and I really believe, like ever since, no, ever since, no, I remember a Portugal without Cristiano Ronaldo, but I remembered very, uh -huh. I remember very little of it. Okay, <laughs> I'm yeah. under my thirties, yeah. but I wanted to say, people, mm -hmm. it was the first time that I can remember in a short-term history that Ronaldo didn't wear the number seven. Bruma <laughs> wore the number seven jersey for Portugal. And I believe since 2007, no other player wore that jersey for Portugal, number seven, other wow. than Cristian Ronaldo. So I'm not <laughs> saying Bruma is the guy to replace Ronaldo. Not, nothing like that whatsoever. But what I'm saying is there's a more willingness towards change and trusting the youth of Portugal with Cristian Ronaldo present, okay? It's not with him out. But yes, I just yeah. wanted to say you know, point at that because I find that really interesting. First time. The American thing to the American thing to do, well, you can't do that while he's still playing. What wait, what number did he wear? Because I didn't get to see the portrait. He didn't get he, did he didn't he, he didn't he didn't play. <laughs> oh right. He, he wasn't just, there. That's right. He just got there, right? He just got there and he will be playing uh, mm -hmm. potentially against who who do they play next? Slo Slovenia. Slovakia. Slovenia. That's right. Okay. Slovenia. That's mm -hmm. right. Sesco and uh, Slovenia. But, uh, you know, just a quick, quick word, uh, because I've, I've heard you talk a lot about Victor Gokieras. Yes. Um, but uh, just a quick word about the team you beat. Uh, Sweden. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Victor Gokieras, listen, has had 19 games this season. He has only not been on the score sheet for four of those games. Mm. Okay. Um, that is uh, pretty, pretty damn impressive, uh, obviously, especially when you consider that three years ago, you and I might have known his name because it was like the beginning stages of Brighton mm -hmm. and their transfer policy and really kind of getting into the weeds with that. But Victor Gilcares back in 2021 was known more so as that Brighton flop. I guess you could say bought bought for a million dollars or I'm sorry, sold eventually for a million euros. Uh, and uh, they were right in the identification of the talent in mm -hmm. Victor Gokeras. They were just way too early and didn't have, I guess, the capacity at that time to foster it. It took it took Coventry. It took the championship um, to chisel Victor Gilcares into who mm. he was, and then sporting, uh, obviously surrounding him with much better players uh, and much better service uh, every day, right? Mm -hmm. Every day in training, every day in, in fixtures has caused him to literally go, you know, stratospheric exactly. uh, in terms of his rise. So it really, really is absolutely um interesting to see because he got on the scoreboard against Portugal. Oh. want to say nice things about Sweden, but like, unfortunately, Alex, mm. Gilkiras, I can't think of, aside from the younger talent that hopefully is going to come good for Sweden, I can't think of a lot of good things to say about oh. Sweden right well, now. And I like the it's, fact it's that easy. Sweden played Isaac Elanga. Yeah. Uh, they played yeah. all of them at the same time. They played Isaac, Elanga, yeah. Gilkiras, and Kulusevski. That's and they got crushed. They did get crushed, it's, but it was the first time they played all together. It's a it's a learning it, curve. Emil Forsberg it, is like the legend of Sweden. The fact that they're growing from no Forsberg, I think it's it's growing pains, like you like to say, Bretton. <laughs> but no, like you're saying, Georgetis, like we, yeah. me and you saw the first game of Georgetis in the stadium, and we were looking at each yep. other saying. We're seeing history with this guy. And we were right because G Victor Gokeres this season for Sporting, 50 goal involvements, 36 goals, 14 assists. The fact that he's doing this, such an immediate impact, shows his quality. And right now in the world of football, he's in the top 10 strikers in the world in form. Yeah. In form yeah. right now, okay? There's better names. There's better names, okay, out there. I think Hoyland's better. I think Alvarez is better. I think Isaac in form is better better but Gio Kedish is the guy right now and Gio Kedish has had a mad influence here in the Portuguese 
league. He's been here less than a year, and he's already one of the most talked names in our country here in Portugal. Sporting's going to win the league again. That's mad what Ruben Amorim to do. Ruben too. Mm -hmm. Ruben plays to Victor Guilherme's strengths. Plays for him to have these 50 goal involvements. And Guilherme mm -hmm. leads this group, inspires this group towards being better players. I think was much better this season. Nun Sanch, sure. other players are now rising. Eduard Quaresma, inspired by what the Swedish legend in the making is doing. So Victor Guilherme, <laughs> I like it. I liked how you pointed um on him because he deserves that credit well it's kind of like you're you're starting a two-horse race in scandinavia um kind of back at the beginning right now you've got norway and you've got sweden and both of them are uh well they're not in the euros uh True. and you know perennially speaking you and would Denmark expect <laughs> one or both of them to be in the euros um but if you're taking pound for pound talent wise um, Sweden is sure frustrating because you do have good enough players in there that they should have made their way, found their way into mm -hmm. Europe, right? Into sure. the Euro, uh, the Euros. But then you take Norway mm -hmm. and you take Norway, who's been under the same manager for the last four years in Solbakken, right? Mm -hmm. Who used to, he was like a stud in the Superliga, the Danish Superliga. He was the Copenhagen, like they, they could do no wrong mm -hmm. under him, right? He's taken over and he's done absolutely nothing mm -hmm. for Norway. Now, th that's fine if we're talking about, you know, the the past. If we're talking about who you had pound for pound in the past mm -hmm. from a talent perspective. But then you start listing the names of the players in the Norwegian side, mm -hmm. right? Uh you mentioned previous to this Frederick Orsna has, has retired internationally. It tells you something about where he thinks the program might be going. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Erling Holland. Then you've got Martin Odegaard. Then you've got Oscar Bob. Then you've got, I mean, you name these players, they should be able to do something. Svernipan. Um, they lo <laughs> yes, Svernipan, well, it's a little early for him, but I, I think they're going to have to go to him sooner rather than later. But it's so frustrating to see this, right? To see this talent. Um, and then they go out there, and Erling Holland was nowhere to be found. He did not look like he wanted to be on the pitch. Um, I've already forgotten who they, who they even played, but it was certainly a team that they should have beaten. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and they ended up losing their friendly over the weekend. You had Martin Odegaard on the pitch. You had uh, Erling Holland on the pitch. You had um, Oscar Bob did score a goal. Uh, Antonio Nusa, I think, was relegated to the bench. Solbakken has to go mm -hmm. uh, for if you want to see Norway actually get to their peak. Mm -hmm. Right. Actually give themselves a chance long term. Solbakken has to go and you got to bring somebody. And I know you and I deviate from who we think it's going to be. Um, but I would say the Bodo Glimt uh, coach, whose name mm. I'm forgetting right now. I say um, Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. <laughs> and you say Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. But ultimately, I just want to see Scandinavia do well mm -hmm. again. And, um, and yeah. 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 Yeah, you we'll see, see Scandinavia do yeah. well again. The strikers of Scandinavian countries, they're doing pretty well. Jokeres, Isaac, like, they're doing yep. really well with Sweden. Then you have Denmark Holland. with uh, Hasmus Vitter Holland doing Holland. really well. And then you have Erling Holland, yes, the king of strikers mm -hmm. in Scandinavia. So it's unreal. Baffles. It's a good time. It's a good time to, to, to watch Scandinavian football. And we're not even mentioning a Sorlov which I believe is a right. really good striker, too. Who started but, as well. Yeah. E exactly. Exactly. But really good. Yep. Something that's going to happen is really good. It's a new international competition. Means new Wonder Kids will rise in it. And we wanted to, uh, to mention here at FC Wonder Kid players that we believe you guys have to be aware of the top international European teams for Euro 2024. I want to start here Absolutely. by saying Spain. A strong Spanish national team means there's mm -hmm. a strong Barca cooking. La Mina Mal, Pau Cubarzi, Fermin, <laughs> Fermin Lopez, Alejandro Valde. You have Pedri, that's not La Masia, but Pedri, he's instrumental for this Barca team. So keep going, yep. Barca, because you are fueling the future of Spain with this. Fueling! I love it, mate. Ain't, hey, I love it. Ain't 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 that the truth? Uh, it just it's it's so whack to me that you're bringing a 16 and a 17 year old to a major international competition. Obviously, that's a testament to how dang good they are and how good the development structure is. But at the oh. same time, it, isn't it isn't it wacky? Isn't it wacky no. to you? I mean, it just you know why, it's, Bretton? It's, it's, it's why? 
La Masia uh, ingrains these kids at 14, 15, 16 and, and looks at them and, say, and says to them, you but, are the best it, 14, 15, 16 year olds in the world I, because I, you're I, playing I, here at Barca. And they believe it. La Mina Mal believes right. he can be the best right winger in the world at 16. But it also, but that support needs to last a flipping lifetime. And Iniesta didn't start or play a role in Spain, right, in the Euros, right, at 16, 17 years old, okay? Um, now, they were later bloomers. It was a different development structure yeah. for sure, right? But it's not it's not a recent thing that La Masia has been, you know, churning out these talents per se. But, yeah, it just – I, I just – you, you I, I look, love Iniesta, you look, but La Min is – No, I get it. Higher, higher level in terms of talent. In Still so talent. early. Talent. talent. I, well, I'm not yeah, saying right level right of now. player, yeah, right but I mean yeah. sheer talent of what he does in uniqueness. Lamine is very mm. unique. Very unique. Mm. A pure trickster. Yeah. If you're a, a fullback, you can't anticipate what Lamine Yamal is going to do. It's mad. Yeah. And Kubarzi, the way Kubarzi is playing for Barca right now, the confidence he's showing is a Royal Ro Rolls Royce type center back. A player that stopped Victor Rossi made the way he did. If he keeps developing, this is the way you can stop the Galacticos ascension with Mbappe, with Vini, with Rodrigo. All of them have seven, eleven, five iconic jerseys. Icons are being mm -hmm. built at Real Madrid. And the fuel of these Barca kids is just that. A kingdom is being built at Madrid. You got to build yours. The fortress of Barca with Lamin Yamal, with Pau Barzi, knowing that they are the answer to defend against Real Madrid. They, can't, they have to. But, they have to stop. But, but Alex, if, you, if, you, if the kingdom is built on 16 and 17-year-olds and then they turn into, like, battle-hardened warriors and knights uh, with, like, missing limbs at 19 and 20 years old, like Gavi and Pedri, <laughs> then we've got issues, right? Missing I mean, I, you know, the analogy kind of <laughs> runs – it runs dry, but you know what I mean. I mean, these I guys, you, like, yeah. they're being put – they're being put through the ringer and being told that this is their kingdom at 16, 17 years old. And I just wish – I hope whoever takes over for Xavi mm -hmm. um, will make sure that they realize – that and, and hopefully they are doing this, but make sure that they realize that, that that the kingdom is not necessarily on their shoulders. This is not life and death. But when you put them it in is. the Spanish national team, it, it is. It a hundred percent is. I agree. And that's that is uh, that's a lot. That's a lot to take on. It was a lot to take on for last generations. Um, for PK stars. Messi and, and and let me let me yeah, let me and Yamal has better numbers than. Uh, a, a lot of the guys that were torchbearers, right? Leo Messi, mm -hmm. definitely Ronaldo. He had he has better numbers than literally any person in history at his age. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just see where it goes from here. I, there's no doubt that he's a flipping world-class talent and should be a world-class talent for many, many years to come and could be one of the best players ever when all is said and done. Mm. The, the only issue I have is that Oh, there's so much time between now and then, man. <laughs> um, and so many games to be played. So I, I, I agree. I just think it's so insane how, in a good way and a bad way, uh, how rapid the ascension has been on oh. Pau Cabarsi and Lamine Yamal. And I know it's to be expected when it comes from there, but you don't see the other teams necessarily riding the backs of really good players. Because they don't have La Masia. Like them as much Because like they don't I, have La Masia. <laughs> And this is the I beauty know. of the great, the legacy of Johan Cruyff. The legacy of Johan Cruyff is with the La Masia Academy. The legacy yeah. of Johan jo 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 Cruyff is the best manager in the world in football right now, which is Pep Guardiola. The legacy of Cruyff is shown with this 4-3-3, played in the best way in the world with Barca and La Masia. And that's what I love to well. see. The print, the fingerprint of Barca is finally coming back with Laporta. And I know Xavi might leave. And I, I, I still believe that there could be a bit of a conversation at the end of the season to convince Xavi. But even if it doesn't a happen, <laughs> a little bit, exactly. I still believe the next manager, if it's not Xavi, will have this La Masia 4-3-3 system as their principle. It has to be the focus. Fair enough. And we're well, mentioning uh, Spain and uh, Barca mm. being the f a strong Spain. Uh, no, a strong Barca team means a strong Spanish national team. A strong Germany yep. team means a strong Bayern Munich. <laughs> and now we see Jamal Musiala, the guy that if 
Germany are going to go bold in Euro 2024. It's with Florian Wirtz and Jamal Musiala being the two best players next to Troni Cruz. And that can happen because Wirtz is a top assistor right now in the world of football being coached by Xabi Alonso. And Musiala is already being asked to be one of the best players of Bayern Munich next to Kane this season. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> And, you know, for anyone that's actually counting there, there's four years between a Laminia Mall and a Florian Beer. It's more than four I... years, right, of Ooh. development. And that's 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 why it's so bonkers to me uh, that, that we even talk about this because Pau Cabarsi and Laminia Mall aren't just coming in for Spain to play, you know, uh, last 15-minute super sub roles. They're coming in to be a massive, massive part it's, of this Spanish national like, team. So, mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> yeah. It's like yeah. you're saying, uh, but, um, yeah. in seven years' time, La Mina Mal and Pau Cubarzi will be younger than Kylian Mbappé is right now. <laughs> it's, uh, Both. It's more, yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> that's mad. It's crazy. And that's, that's almost two World Cups away. Exactly. Um, but uh, I I honestly, like we, you said U21 in terms of talking about some of these young players are going to be at the Euros mm -hmm. um, and those that are going to get like the biggest runouts. And you started with the, the ones that were. It's the 16 and the 17 year old <laughs> beyond that. Uh, but no, you're absolutely right. I mean, so goes, uh, so how goes Wirtz, how mm -hmm. goes Musiala, is how goes Germany. Exactly. And it just so happens that Wirtz and Musiala will get more freedom simply because Tony Cruz is going to be on the field with them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, X without, like, without Tony Cruz, I don't think you can make this team uh, anywhere close Fact. to even an outside favorite. Mm -hmm. And um, that that's what is going to allow... Wirtz and Musiala to really shine, to take the risks that they need to take. Um, and then I'm pretty confident, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Nagelsmann knows how to play to those strengths uh, mm -hmm. for them. So, yeah, I, I if there's like a lock for breakout, uh, Musiala already broke out the World Cup at the World True. Cup, being the silver lining for Germany and what was otherwise a pretty cruddy World Cup for them. But yeah, this is Wirtz's World uh, Wirtz's, um euros right and i am so here for it considering what he has gone through um to get where he is now to get back to a consistent level to to win over and constantly win over uh shabby alonso and now julian nagelsman um so yes i want to see florian veerts uh lift that I don't know. Does he even qualify for young player of the tournament? I think he does. I think he does. I think he yeah, okay. I think okay. he does qualify yeah. and I think he's one of the main contenders towards winning it for sure. And Pavlovich oh. too. We mentioned Virts, we mentioned mm. Musiala. Pavlovich did true. have his debut for Germany and I think he will be an yep. important player even though he won't start. I think he will be important yeah. towards the team in terms of options. Uh but yes, well, Good ones. I like the big uh, names. Yeah. We're, we're informing I mean, these the other, people at the big names. <laughs> well, the other big names we all know, they're going to be Xavi Simmons, right? Yes. Xavi Simmons for Netherlands. It's going to be Warren Zaire Emery for France. And then you also have to remember what Kamavinga is only, uh, I guess he is 22 now. Jean Neves he's a, he's an ancient person. <laughs> Jean Neves, of course. Um, and then, But beyond those players, right, that we talk about constantly here, mm. um, we've seen a Hungarian team um, ah. that, to be honest, it, it, it's not a pushover. We've seen them when they weren't pushovers at the last Euros. We've seen them when they weren't pushovers um, in qualifying. Uh, but I would love to see, I mean, Milos Kerkez is still one of the better young fullbacks um, in Europe right Agreed. now. I don't think he has fully gotten going just yet for Bournemouth. Um, but I, a lot of it was uh, injury issues, getting back to fitness. Um, but he is going to be absolutely humongous uh, for a hungry oh. team that I think is going to go further than people will Ooh, give them credit for. You're 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 yep. putting worrying signs because Hungary is in the same group as Switzerland that has summer injured yep. and of Scotland mm -hmm. and of Germany, of course. Yep. Scotland should be worried of this ascension of Hungary. Hungary in their yep. last 13 games, they haven't lost one game. They haven't lost one game, and it's with Captain Dominic Shabazzlai. Shabazzlai for Hungary is just built different. One of the best free kick takers in the world when he plays for Hungary, no doubt in my mind. And the responsibility he feels when he plays for this national team, 
boy, oh boy, we're mm. going to see something special. He could be in the team of yeah. the Euro 2024 tournament. Bold prediction, yeah. but that could happen if Hungary goes through with Scotland, Switzerland, and Germany. Because there's a real chance that that can happen. And Scotland has been amazing. I, I so. Scott McTominay scoring so many goals. Well, B- uh, Billy Gilmore, yeah. well involved. You ha- uh, John McGinn, very good player. But Hungary, I see a very good unit, very good team together. And the game against well, Turkey, I was surprised. Yep. You mentioned Kerkez, yep. but I want to mention this Turkish backbone because the Turkish oh, backbone of, of Wonder Kids. Wow. Wow. Turkish fans, you are lucky for the amount of talent you have that's going to Euro 2024. Arda Guler, sure. special, special talent. Semi Kilichoy, Beziktas Wonder Kid, playing so good. Kanu Zun, on real forward and then you have a Kenan Yildiz the wonder kid of Juve this season the inspiration yep. behind Vlahovic unreal what is happening and Kaplan good player and Sihan yeah. Sihan Kunak don't forget this Kunak, player yep. too Kunak sorry yeah. <laughs> comes Kunak. up uh, what was he he's standard Liege he's come up uh, exactly there but uh, you know it's Kenan Yildiz over the weekend I think was the only one that started uh, mm-hmm. Arda Guler came off the bench. It, it's really going to be how much leeway or how much time are any of those guys going to... There's no doubt that future is, like, scalding. Ooh. It's bright. Uh, it's whether or not they actually play a role. And they'll be going up against Portugal, so you're going to be definitely scouting and uh, reporting back to us on uh, whether or not any of them um, are, are going to pose I you guys I can tell you, the, some uh, scouts have asked <laughs> me about Kanu Zun. Some people are, are yeah. here in Portugal are asking about Kanu Zun. Well, that can happen. It's 50-50. Uh, the, the, the people that really frequent and love uh, second Bundesliga ball mm-hmm. tell me that he's overrated. Tell me mm. that he's overrated. But then, but then when you see his name on a score sheet every week, obviously not everything is the score sheet. <laughs> um, but uh, when you see a consistent name on the score sheet, when he is a consistent, say, set piece taker, he's a consistent uh, penalty kick yes. taker for a, a, a team that is rising. Um, you you stand up, take notice, and then and you he- add to the fact that he's only 18, 18 years old. Um, and yes, my ears are definitely perked up whether multitude. or not you think he's overrated or not. The multitude yeah. of the positions he can play. He can play striker. He can play behind the striker. Correct. He can play at left wing. A lot of people need that mm-hmm. type of player. Comfortable in a lots of places on the pitch. And a lot of styles well, of I play. Well, I saw two, two places um, or a couple other names that I mm-hmm. wanted to get in there. Uh, Belgium, very clearly in their most recent friendly, mm. are, are really leaning into... Mm-hmm. leaning into the fact uh, that they need to get younger. Yes. Uh, Coney De Vinter, who uh, starts for um, Genoa, mm-hmm. right? Genoa, am I yes. correct, or is that Torino? And they're going to buy Genoa. him now. Uh, Genoa, and, yes, 8 million. Yes, yes, yes. Buy option. Yep. Why, how can Juve let that happen? But that's another story. I, I think if it's not him, it's Zeno De Bast. I'd mm-hmm. be very surprised if both of them start for Belgium, but I think one of them will definitely be starting for them at the Euros, and both are ones to watch. Zeno mm-hmm. DeBast, we, you know, he's still been a very, very important part of Anderlecht. I think he's just kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit because he hasn't mm-hmm. necessarily been putting in, like, you know, talk about me every week type of performances, but Anderlecht is still in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Belgium, I'm really interested to see not just how well, those two center backs get along, but also Doku ah. uh, in it, this massive major tournament. And obviously on the other side, Bakayoko. Exactly. And whether or not uh, they can get on the field together and whether or not they can terrorize defenses together. Because Belgium, while I didn't put them in that back three, right behind the fr- the favorites of threes, um, it really mm. comes down to what they can do in the next three months um, and how much these guys can develop. Because Doku, uh, would you admit Doku's been a little bit off as of late in well, terms of his uh, final I think Doku product? for Belgium feels a lot of responsibility. And Doku feels that mm-hmm. he has to match the greatness of Aiden Hazard. I'm not saying yeah. he's going to do it, yeah. but I think Doku has that weight <laughs> that he has to back. And Do- Jeremy yeah. Doku... Since Eden Hazard, it's, it's, it's funny that mm-hmm. Jeremy Doku and he's Eden Hazard both are unreal dribblers and both terrify fullbacks in the Premier League. And I, I, I really yep. believe Doku and Yohan Bakayoko 
will be perceived as one of the best uh, young winger duos in the world after Euro 2024. I believe Euro yeah. 2024 will give the exposure that Bakayoko and Doku deserve for the unreal qualifying they did for in the Euros. And what Tedesco mm -hmm. is doing is phenomenal with this Belgian team. Tedesco is trusting the youth. Himself, he's like 38, 39. He's a wonder kid coach, and he's doing the right decisions. Trusting a Mandela Keita, trusting an Artur Vermaren. The best Onana has been recent now with Tedesco too. And Fayez, mm. you got a, a center, you have a team that is more realistic and playing to the best player's strengths. That's why Lukaku that's has right. mad numbers, and that's why Bakayoko and Doku they just play so well for Belgium right now. And in the past, that wouldn't be yeah. the case. The best players would play yeah. best for in their clubs, not in their country. Mm. So times yeah, are true. changing. And we mentioned best players yes, they are. playing for their clubs better than in the countries. Shout out to Kobe Maino. No, I'm joking. It's, it was the <laughs> debut. It was the debut. But if we mention Wonder Kids in Euro 2024, a special section has to have Kobe Maino. That Kobe, of course. Kobe Maino... Uh, his first start, uh, Kobe Maino's first start in the Premier League was four months ago, and he already now comes on for England at 18. It's an unreal story, inspiration, and if you're good enough, you are there. And Kobe Maino, I Girl. believe, yep. will be in Euro 2024 with deservingly because he's an unreal talent, Maino. Woo! He, I wanted to say that. He is. And Bellingham yeah. doesn't count. Uh, Come on, people. Okay? Bellingham's not... No, uh, he's no, 20, no. I know, but it's different. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, and you know, like, there's there are some names here that, that we could... That, that were not part of their senior squads. Mm. Um, I, if I, What I really, really would like, right? Italy is going through one of the most topsy-turvy times. Uh, they're under Spalletti, right? You win the Euros, then you miss out on the World Cup. Uh, <laughs> then you almost miss qualifying, sort of. There True. was definitely a little bit of drama for Italy for these Euros. Um, but Spalletti. now Spalletti's in there. They're, they're mm -hmm. playing a little bit better. Uh, and I just think this Italian team, beyond who they currently have, right, uh, whether it's Mancini, whether it's uh, Barella, whether it's these all relatively known quantities, I think Spalletti needs to bring a very unknown quantity with him mm -hmm. uh, to the Euros, to Germany. And I would really love for that player to be Simone Pafundi, mm. right? Simone Pafundi is the wonder kid for Udinese that is now on loan at La Seine. Um, but he has recently really started to pep it up, not just in Switzerland in the Super League uh, with several goals for them, but he's playing up as a 17-year-old still. I don't think he's turned 18 yet. Mm -hmm. Let me just double check. No, no, yes. I don't he think 17. he's turned 18 just yet. Yep, 17 years old. Um, and I don't think I'm... It is a little hyperbolic, I guess, to say that he dribbles like Messi, but he he kind of like does. He he's a definitely fast dribbler. emulates. He emulates Messi when he's dribbling. Dribbling, right? Yeah, short. He's diminutive, low center of gravity. Uh, does like the stutter step or the the pause, right? And and waits for things to develop before then making his last move. He's very smart at what he does. Uh, he's already made. I think in the last 18 months, he's debuted for the seven, or not debuted, but he's played for the 17s, the eight, the 19s, the 21s, and the senior national team for the Azuri, right? He has actually made his debut. So I want Spalletti. I don't know how much time he would play, but I would love for a Simone Pafundi to make his way uh, to Euros uh, because, yeah, you know, that's just kind of this unknown weapon. Um, and they don't really have that on the wings right mm -hmm. now. I mean, tell me, do they have a winger? currently uh that can do that i know kiesa, kiesa. maybe pre-entry yeah. could do that but that's it and that's it right yes is the big so, name yes in terms of wingers that can have that type of dribbling that you're mentioning yes pafundi i think should be called up for the euros too i agree with what you're saying i'd love Clemson. it completely agree I'd love but it. we're gonna have more videos about this okay but make sure you subscribe to fc wonder kid to know who are the next wonder kids we will mention in euro 2024 edition talks like this one okay we didn't even talk about the group sure. of portugal Eu sou português, I'm Portuguese. okay that's gonna be a bold video <laughs> when it comes out but I will, we have to mention this in the in the podcast, which is mm -hmm. you being a U.S. citizen. The Copa America yeah. is going to be in the U.S. I must know your <laughs> thoughts about this because the groups, I, I think they don't disappoint. And the first game oh, no. will be between Argentina and Canada June 20. Can Canada surprise mm -hmm. the world like Saudi Arabia did in the World Cup, Britain? 
Uh, no. no, no <laughs> yeah. Come on, I'm sorry to be so matter of fact about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tejon Buchanan, Alfonso Davies, obviously, you have weapons there. They're also kind of known quantities these days. Alfonso Davies is, I'm not going to say he's fully <laughs> lost a step, but he, he has been dealing with physical issues. Sure. Uh, and, and that doesn't necessarily go away. I think the Jonathan David has really done well for Canada in 2024. I think only in the top five or top seven leagues. Uh, I think it's only Gilkeras and Mbappe that have more goals than he does in 2014 so or 2024 Ooh. not 2014 uh so far i think he's got 15 goals for Lille uh so far this year but then again everybody has been waiting for jonathan david to take that next step up from Lille, and he hasn't True. just yet but yeah argentina peru chile canada i still have to say it's argentina and chile um not easily going through uh canada can maybe give them run for their money but peru could too canada is not deep currently mm -hmm. um and that that is interesting it's it's crazy to think like canada is not the same team that won the world cup qualifying group uh back in the day and we found right. that out unfortunately at the world cup but they have taken strides ahead they have new coach um a new coach and and we'll see what happens but man argentina versus canada i'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to get lopsided no um, <laughs> but, 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 but listen then mm -hmm. alex when you put Uruguay up against the United States in Group C, ah. <laughs> and, and 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 we take and we take USA Jamaica that Concacaf oh Nations League days. semifinal uh, the other day as any sort of a litmus test, you know I'm shaking in my boots playing Burr halter ball against Uruguay uh, because we have so much more collective talent uh, than Burr halter is uh, assembling or than Burr halter is is putting together. No, it shouldn't. I mean, Burr halter sh should not have gotten a second go around. I'm not sure why we are even here at this matter, but once again, here we are. And it's, uh, what, what do they say? Well, you beating your head against the wall and expecting something different. Um, that's the purest definition of insanity. Like, that's not how it should be. Uh, we should have lost to Jamaica. All right, here's my rant. We should have lost to Jamaica. Jamaica played the better game. Sure, they scored 41 seconds in and then bunker balled us. Doesn't matter. We have no answers because Greg Berhalter doesn't know how to make answers, right? Exactly. We have good players, and things did not change until Gio Reyna, who barely plays club football these days. Gio Reyna came in and actually uh, made some things out of it, but it took an own goal, Alex. You in the 98th minute, it took an own goal. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, he's barely playing. So I, I, I the Berhalter... It's it's a in a on a much smaller level. It's a Southgate can't can only take you so far, right? At mm -hmm. least Southgate takes you to a major final, right? <laughs> in Euros, takes you to a, a World Cup qu quarterfinal. But in the U.S., there is a large and a growing number of people that are a hundred percent certain that Greg Berhalter will not take this wonderful group of players. Um, incredibly far, and if for some reason he does, it is in spite of Greg Berhalter and not because of him. Ah, um, so same anyway, sentence that you have for Southgate, you have for Berhalter. It, That's not a good it, sign. It's true. You, but just no. so I just wanted to say on the Argentina front on my end, Group A Argentina. Yes. Nine points in three games, okay? It's a comfortable yeah, yeah. win for me. Messi's going to be really happy. <laughs> and especially if he mm -hmm. plays some games in Miami, that will be ridiculous. The final is in Miami. Oh. One of the most likely teams to go is Argentina, mm -hmm. and this group helps that happen. But going now with Group yeah. C, like you said, U.S., Uruguay, Panama, Bolivia, USA, and Uruguay must go through in this group u.s playing in 100%. home soil if you don't go through it's immediate sack greg berhalter immediate and the fact that greg berhalter has stayed in the u.s men's national team for so long just tells me pulisic must like him the group of players <sighs> must like him weston mckenney must like him but in order to win the biggest national teams in the world, you have to go to uncomfortable positions in your life. You have to Correct. go to uncomfortable conversations, uncomfortable tactics. Right. And I think Berhalter is not a manager that likes uncomfortable situations. And you need to be no. that type of manager in order to win. And Greg Berhalter no. is not a manager that has winning as his priority in my view. I think he likes to have a good group. Yeah. He has a, a good mentality, a good a present and future to develop, but not a winning group. Yep. I, I This is what I have well, to listen, point I, fingers. I, I have to. Yeah, I, Greg no, Berhalter it, it, it's, gives it's, me a vibe of a PE teacher. 
not a U.S. men's national team coach, head coach, the big boss, I know. the big boss, I know. Jesse Marsh. I know. Get him. You're going to have a World Cup in 2026 in home soil. It cannot happen. What but, happened to Qatar? U.S. is more than that. You got a top league, yeah. in uh, well, a top development league. Like, you can go places. It's like, oh. Right. And, 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 and here, here's the fool me once type of situation, Alex. This all makes sense. You saying this and, and me saying this. Uh, but it's as if we went back to the three games before we actually wound up luckily qualifying for the World Cup. Right. Mm -hmm. This is what we we've been dealing with this for a very long time. Th then guess what they did? They let him go for six months. <laughs> they apparently interviewed other candidates, Alex, and then they decided that they wanted to re up for another cycle with the same coach when they didn't even come close to their goals. And Bielsa was available. Leading up to that. And Bielsa, exactly. And now we're going to go against a Bielsa-led Uruguay, <laughs> right? Um, which is which is so kind of it's ridiculous. Poetic. You want Bielsa? That, that, that is out of your comfort zone, man. That is out of USA's comfort zone for sure. And you are 100% correct, Alex. They do like Greg Berhalter. Yep. They do like him. Everyone but probably Gio Reyna. But they do <laughs> like him because he does listen to them. He does whatever, treat them like people, whatever. But they are young. They are young group mm -hmm. and they need to be uncomfortable yes. Greg Berhalter doesn't make them uncomfortable um and that's that's like what I'm not getting like if Weston McKinney can be out of a Juve and basically packing his bags and getting ready to go somewhere else to then showing up at training every day showing Allegri why he should be in the 11 why mm -hmm. he should be in the 11 and then ultimately becoming an indispensable part of the team of the Juve yep. he is ready to step out of his comfort zone he yep. does not need a Greg Berhalter Yep. Right now, I'm not saying well, Allegri is like the, the whatever, mm -hmm. but Allegri literally forced him out of his comfort zone. Exactly. Like you're out of Juve, basically. And he fought his way back in. He said, no, I'm putting my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. I want to stay and I want to fight. They need that type of situation at uh, in the United States camp. Otherwise, this has to be. And here's it's a perpetuation thing, Alex, like the Jamaica win. Yeah. You look at the thing two months from now, they win three to one. Haji mm -hmm. Wright scores two goals, right? It looks wonderful. Gio Reyna has two assists. We're Amazing. not even talking about the fact that their butt should have been out the door and they should have been in this third-place consolation game that starts shortly, right? Mm -hmm. And instead, guess what that does? Yes, I'm happy they won. But no, at the same time, it's a double-edged sword again. Because <laughs> what? It perpetuates this thing that Greg Berhalter knows how to take this team to its highest levels. And I don't believe that, for no. one thing. And it's taken me... Three years to get there. Taking yeah. me three years to, to really turn into a pessimist about this. But we'll see. USA I, plays Mexico over the weekend, and um, either it's going to be a humbling or we're going to find another way to win. No, but, and damn, and, Copa America is it. And mm. Exactly. Copa America is it. And I think if it's Greg it. Berhalter has bad results in Copa America, don't see the CONCACAF mm -hmm. results as something positive to, to, to overlook what can happen in Copa America because Copa America is the real test for the World Cup level teams. A Uruguay US, yeah. if it's like a 4 0 loss, you're gone, Greg Berhalter. That cannot happen with the amount of players that you have that are quality. And this is the thing with the U.S. men's national team that really enrages me. I see the quality growing in your team. I see Pepe yeah. go doing phenomenal at PSV. I see the talents of Gio Reyna ever since he's in your young age. Pulisic, McKenney are leading mm -hmm. in the Serie A. Haji Wright is nonstop scoring goals for Coventry. you got talent. Mm. And Dest is majorly important to a PSV. So... Yep. There's the the players are there. What is not there is the system and the tactics. And the U.S. men's mm -hmm. national team will will have the priority, the priority and the minimal expectations. This can be bold for a lot of of, of outside fans, but the U.S. men's mm -hmm. national team minimal expectations in 2026 World Cup is to go through in the group stage. It's to grow through mm -hmm. the group stage. If the league, if the major league soccer is bringing a player like Messi. To help the development and the eyeballs of the league is because they have high expectations as a, as a nation in football. And you have to go through in the group stage. And Bearhalter doesn't give you the chances to, that to happen, in my view. You'll get schooled uh, well, by the top managers. Schooled. Well, listen, uh, it, it, we, we went through the group stage uh, by mm -hmm. the hair of our chinny-chin-chin chin in 1994 when we last hosted. 
Uh, but <laughs> that was when we also had that iconic win over Colombia. Um, and that was the, the litmus, or not the litmus, that was the bar set then. That was in 1994 when a lot, there was no MLS. There was no league, mm -hmm. right? The NASL had already died. It had petered out. Um, and uh, they had already had preliminary stage talks about starting Major League Soccer. Uh, but, but the yes, expectation then, Alex, mm -hmm. was group stage. I'm going to tell tell you right now that the expectation for 2026 better not be group stage. No, go it through. It better be. It, oh, no, no. It better be further than we've ever gone before. Mm. It better be quarterfinals or bust. This is a larger tournament, right, this time mm. around. But when it comes down to it, I fully expect us, fully expect us to go further than we've ever been. Because that's what being a host in a World uh, Cup. should give you. And, yeah, in a World Cup. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious about this. If we can We're, do it in 2002, mm -hmm. 2002, right, come pretty dang close to, to even upsetting Germany then. Uh, if we can do it in 2002 with Landon Donovan, Demarcus Beasley, uh, you know, Oh gosh, who, mm -hmm. what other great names? Clint Dempsey, uh, man. Wonderful names, but we're not. Yeah, we're not going to do a history lesson right now. But if we can do it in 2002, Dos Acero, uh, Mexico, in the <laughs> round of 16 in 2002 to get to the quarterfinals, we better do it in 2026 on our own soil. We With better. With the talent um, you and, have, uh, you better for sure. I like it exponentially beyond what it was in 2002 and so far beyond from a foundational perspective to 1994. And we have so many more players that are cutting their teeth elsewhere, but that doesn't guarantee a success. You exactly. also need to have the coach. You need to have somebody that can move the chess pieces around the chessboard. And Burhalter is not that guy. And it's been apparent that that is the case for the last three years. Easily. Exactly. Easily. Exactly. And yeah. we've mentioned a lot on the U.S. men's national team. We give a bit of uh, information on Argentina with Group A, but we have other groups. So Group B that has Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, uh -huh. and Jamaica. A very well-balanced group in my view. I honestly believe Ecuador and Mexico are the favorites, but a Jamaica national Agreed. team could surprise a lot of people. And Group D... That is Brazil, Colombia, Paraguay, and Costa Rica. I believe Group yeah. D, Brazil, and Colombia are going to go through, but Colombia might go through in first. Might. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. I mean, who did they beat the other day? Colombia Unbeaten. just beat Spain. Spain. They beat, they Spain. beat Spain. Luis yeah. Diaz. Like, mm -hmm. unreal. Yeah. Once again, he has that yeah. dribble like he did with Kyle Walker and Rodri. Luis Diaz does it again. And Colombia has, yep. is unbeaten in their last 20 international games. Beating the yeah, likes of good. Spain. Beating the likes of uh, Brazil. Beating the likes of Germany. Uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. This is a good Colombia team with James Rodriguez as a veteran. Leading the way. It's true. I like it. It's I true. I like what I see with them. Yeah. And and uh, Daniel Munoz is the guy I think that uh, people's people are starting to uh, warm up to. He's their mm -hmm. right back, and he's been very good for Colombia. Um, I think he just made his way. Is he is he at Nottingham Forest now, too? Mm. No, he's at Crystal Palace. He's at Crystal Palace now. That's where he is. Uh, but, yeah, Costa Rica, well, it might be Kaylor Navas's last international oh, tournament. We'll um, so, yeah, I got to gotta throw him out there. But, yeah, I think Colombia is a dark horse. Obviously, Colombia is a dark horse next to the favorites, which are – Argentina and Uruguay for me, with Brazil obviously a little bit right behind. Mm. Uh, although they're you, you're right. It was Dorival's first game. Exactly. They look they look different, but but we need to see more of it first and Bre foremost before I before I go there. They're coming off of losing three <laughs> games in a row. We have to remember that. It's true. Three games in a row. It's so, true. And they lose we'll to see. Uruguay. They lose to Colombia. They lose to teams that in the past oh, they would gosh. have won. But one thing's yeah. I'm one thing I'm gonna say. If Brazil is going to mm -hmm. win Copa America, which right now is unlikely, and that's mad to say about Brazil, a team that has won mm -hmm. as many World Cups as they did, a team with that history and amount of talent. But if they're going to win yep. it, it's with Hendrik, Vini, and Rodrigo starting. A hundred percent. I'm not even joking. They have to trust the yep. youth in order for that to happen. And Real Madrid fans are going to be backing this Brazil team if that front three is starting every game. So it's going to be yep. Spain all backing the Spanish. No, the Brazil national team, mate. It's going to be mad. Well, or the Barca fans well, will be hating. And Baraldo starting too. Baraldo that we mentioned well, at the yeah. beginning of the podcast. Baraldo yep. must start for Brazil just like Hendrik in Copa America. The future oh, in uh, action completely. Yeah, I'll, we'll do a, we'll do another um, 
uh, you know, a shorter video on Wonder Kids to watch in Copa America because I think it's going to be the stage for quite a few. Colo Barco just had his first cap for Argentina. You got David Martinez for Venezuela. Uh, who'd you say? Savio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nine Dude is still only 19 years old, which <laughs> it just it baffles me considering how lights out he's been in La Liga. Um, but uh, where is where is Mexico's young talent? That's what I got. Santiago say. Jimenez. I want to see some. I know. And, and there's already there's already some rub. Uh, there between Santiago Jimenez and uh, their coach. And also, on top of that, for some reason, just to add fuel to the dramatic fire of what is El Tree these days, you've got Chucky Lozano coming out and, and throwing <laughs> shots across the bow about uh, Tata Martino, now Ooh. Inter Miami coach, uh, and about how th they just did not like him, period, Ooh. as a coach. I mean, El Tree is the, the king of shooting themselves in the foot although it's kind of poetic that i'm saying that when we decided to re-up greg berhalter's contract oh, um enough. after a, a pretty crappy four years but anyway long story short man the the copa america is going to be going on at pretty much exactly the same time as euros so if you want to be fully inundated by football um and literally lose your life to football um in a good way uh, it can be done this June to July. And, oh, uh, I can't wait. I can't well, wait. April, this this month, no, this month, no, this summer, football is going to yeah. be constantly present. We have a Champions League that's, that's looking amazing. ridiculous. We have a Copa America. Mm -hmm. We have a Euros and even an Olympics that Thierry, Thierry Henry yeah. coaching France. That could be interesting yeah. for a lot of people. Let us know your reactions of the Copa America draw. And if you're listening until now, thank you. Thank you so much for going both here. Another week with us. Like this video. Let's have more than 100 likes here in episode 149. Please. Come on, 149 weeks doing this. Going bold with you guys. Show your support. And don't forget to comment too. Any topic you'd like to see. Anything that we are missing. Again, people, thank you so much for going bold with us another week.